the virus was unforgiving. It was relentless and evil and unpredictable. We had never had to face anything like it before. 50 million killed. They called it the Spanish flu. That was back in 1918. Many years later, in 1951, I was working on a PhD at the University of Iowa, and I had this opportunity to travel up to a small oceanside village in Alaska called Grevig Mission. It was my hope that I would get some answers that would help us better understand the virus, why it had been so deadly, see if we could maybe use the virus to prevent future viruses. You see, in Brevik village in 1918, of the 80 adult inhabitants, 73 were killed by the virus, and they were buried in a mass grave. When I got to Alaska, I started visiting burial sites, much to the disapproval of my family, because it was my hope that I would be able to find traces of that virus in the very people who had lost their lives to it. Of course, the village elders didn't want me to excavate, and it's perfectly understandable. It was their children and their families, and they, they wanted them to just be able to rest in peace. But fortunately, luckily, eventually they did give me permission. The ground was so frozen that I had to set up bonfires around the digging area just to soften the ground up. Eventually I found a little girl. She was wearing a blue dress and had a red ribbon in her hair. It was heartbreaking, really. But I was able to preserve the lung tissue of four other bodies. The trip back from Alaska, the, the plane had to keep landing and Every time it landed, I deboarded and tried to refreeze the lung tissue by using CO2 from fire extinguishers. That got a lot of curious gazes from other passengers on the plane, I can tell you. But in spite of my best efforts, the lung tissue samples yielded nothing to me. However, 46 years later, I read an article about some researchers in Washington, D.C., who had been able to reconstruct partially a genome of that virus from lung tissue samples that had been preserved since 1918. I knew I just had to go back to Brevig Mission. And so I got permission, and at my own expense, I flew back there, and the village elders gave me permission again to dig, and that's when I discovered Lucy a young Inuit woman whose lungs were so perfectly frozen and preserved that I was able to ship them back to Washington. Much to my surprise, ten days after the tissue samples arrived in Washington, D.C., the researchers there were able to identify a virus. That's where it all began. From that, they were able to reconstruct an entire genome of the virus. And now we know more about the influenza virus than we ever did before. You know, I, I almost talked myself into believing that nothing would ever come of it. And uh, I almost lost my passion for it. But you know, you really shouldn't ever lose your passion or your belief. You just have to find the motivation to just keep going.